Welcome back. I'm Lewis with Lab Padre, bringing you episode three of Starbase Weekly Updates. Now let's dig in. Starting things off at the crane yard, SpaceX's new self-propelled modular transporter power packs, which provide independent power to the transport units, were picked up and moved. On March 18th and lasting most of the day, a second and final full-stack cryo test of Booster 4 and Ship 20 was conducted. Elon Musk has since confirmed that the first orbital flight test will be performed with a new ship and booster. Starting on the 17th, crews over at the South Texas Tracking Station began maintenance work on Dish 1. The Tracking Station provides ship-to-ground communications for Starship and Falcon 9 rockets. With cryo-testing of the booster and ship wrapping up, Highway 4 was reopened and SpaceX personnel returned to the launch pad. Late in the afternoon on the 19th, with no more tests to perform, crews began preparations for destacking Ship 20 by disconnecting the ship's quick disconnect panel. Once unhooked, the quick disconnect arm was ready to be swung out of the way, clearing the way for lifting operations with Mechazilla's chopsticks. At last, around 9 p.m., destacking operations were ready to begin. Over the next hour and 45 minutes, the ship was slowly lifted away from the booster and carefully lowered down to a pre-positioned transport stand. Mechazilla's lower stabilizer arms were actuated several times, releasing, reattaching, and then releasing one final time as S-20 was aligned to the transport stand. Then, with the ship now safely on the ground, all of Mechazilla's holding mechanisms were detached from Ship-20. With the ship now standing on its own, the chopsticks were then lowered to the hard stop at the base of the tower. Meanwhile, at Wide Bay, crews continue to make quick work of the structure's roof. A number of prefabricated beam and column assemblies were the first parts to be lifted and installed. Once in place, these structural elements were soon connected with additional members. In just two hours, the construction crews had installed most of the perimeter structural elements ahead of the next truss section. With the ship de-stacked from the booster, the quick disconnect arm was ready to be swung back into place. Later that day, SPMTs underneath the transport stand carried Ship 20 from the launch tower, ultimately placing it down at the test stands. Back at the wide bay, the second of two roof trusses was lifted into place. Things soon got hairy though. As the truss segment was being lowered into place, one of the workers that began to climb onto the truss fell off. Fortunately, their safety harness came to the rescue and arrested the fall. Safety first. The next morning, police arrived to close Highway 4 for a final round of testing with Booster 4. This round of booster pressurization and systems testing occurred at ambient temperature. Super Heavy wasn't the only thing being tested though, as the fuel side at the tank farm underwent its own round of equipment checks. This hardware stores and subcools liquid methane and pumps it during loading operations into Starship and Super Heavy. The morning of the 22nd signified the beginnings of a new round of vehicle hardware testing with the booster can crusher being moved from storage at the building site to the launch pad. This large structure will be used to qualify and evaluate the engineering of the booster by simulating engine and flight loads. With the booster testing wrapping up, SpaceX's LR-11000, also known as Marvin, was brought to the launch pad. SpaceX has so far declined to use the chopsticks to move Booster 4. A trio of 10-ton LR-11000 counterweights from Buckner's LR-11000 inventory were also seen being trucked over to the launch site. The busy day at the launch site continued with one of the transport stands being repositioned. Once enough equipment was moved and the way was cleared, Marvin continued its journey towards the orbital launch mount in preparation for removing Booster 4. Meanwhile, preparations continued for removing the existing vehicles from the launch site. Counterweights are used to shift the center of mass lower when transporting the ship and boosters. With some careful maneuvering around the underground pipe infrastructure, the chopsticks, and the orbital launch mount, Marvin was finally in position for the upcoming booster lift. 
Just a few minutes later, what appears to be an MH-65 helicopter of the United States Coast Guard made a low pass near the beach. The last major piece of hardware to put in place prior to Booster 4's removal from the launch mount was a transport stand. With all other preparations complete, the crane's load spreader was attached to the booster. Returning to the wide bay, construction crews had a bit of trouble with a section of the wall stabilizing truss work. The crews soon aborted the installation and lift. Back in Florida, standing tall on the deck of Just Read the Instructions, against the rising sun with a record-setting 12th mission under its belt, Booster 1051 made its triumphant return to Port Canaveral for unloading and refurbishment. And there you have it. Thanks again for watching Lab Padre's weekly Starbase news. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure you subscribe down below and also check out our Discord server which has over 13,000 members. It is the best place to discuss all things spaceflight with detailed rocket talks, daily trivia, and so much more. So join today. See you all next week. Lab Padre out.